Kevin De Bruyne leading Belgium to an all-important three points. He was on the score sheet and played a key role as always, but what an important victory this was for those fans. Had they not won this, progression would have been in serious doubt. But now Group E in a fascinating position with all four teams on three points going into the final match day. But confirmation of the full-time score in Cologne, Belgium, two, Romania, nil, Ulprit. Two of us here, correct with our prediction. <laughs> I think we have to wear the same kind of clothes tomorrow as well. <laughs> I'm more than happy to. I quite like this outfit I've got on, so I'm exactly. more than happy to. The John Wick outfit, as you can see. You're looking very sharp in that, and if you continue to predict that well, we'll have to see it time and time again. But live scenes now, these fans, the players celebrating and enjoying it, it does mean so much to this Belgium team, Mark, because while they do come in as a top-ranked nation and the favourites to win this group and potentially a favourite to win the tournament. Their start was not what they expected, but they've responded very nicely here. Yeah, just what the doctor ordered, wasn't it? You know, a good performance. Um, they still be worried about the chances that they created and, and, and didn't put away. But, you know, 2-0, clean sheet, great result. Puts them well within the hunt to, to top the group at the end of it all. We'll bring you the group permutations as we take a look and recap all of the action, but it's going to be a fascinating close, and that team there, they're still in it. They're, there's no doubt that despite this defeat, which, look, I think most people predicted a Belgium win here, but obviously their opening day performance against uh, Ukraine still has them in a very good position. In fact, they are still top of uh, this group. And look at this here, Tedesco. Of course, what it could mean to him here, what these three points mean. Look at that message. He's fired up, and now he will be hopeful that they can continue this form and carry it on into the tournament. There he is with Romelu Lukaku, who again had a goal ruled out by the VAR. Three of them now he's had ruled out in the tournament. I think he has done something <laughs> really bad. <laughs> that goals are not coming to him. Yeah. But... The only positive that I can see is he's getting into the positions. He's there, but some, sometimes, unfortunately, things happen that you mm. can't control. But most important thing is he needs to be positive. His team is on the winning side, and he needs to make sure that he's making those runs for the players. Well, he'll be back, no doubt about that. But one man who got things right today was Kevin De Bruyne, and he was our changemaker of the match. Sony Live's coverage of UEFA Euro 2024 change maker of the match brought to you by ACO. That's come through here for De Bruyne. He's wrapped up the win for Belgium. The captain makes the point safe. And Belgium have their first win at this Euro. Kevin De Bruyne, our change maker of the match, and we highlighted his numbers at halftime. Let's see how he fared at full time there again. Let him cook and Belgium deliver. They did again. 68 touches for De Bruyne, three key passes and three shots on target. 12 duels won. Mark, we said it at halftime, but when he steps up for club or country, very often they come out with the three points. Yeah, and, and you know, something he can get better, you know. He, he's done brilliant today, but there's a couple of times when he, he's, especially for across the, the box, towards the end of the game, he, he just he just did a little bit too strong. But, yeah, he's, he's been brilliant. He's integral to everything that, that Belgium have done today. Um, and the one thing you, you know about him is he keeps going till the end, doesn't he? And you've seen him today. He was racing around like a 20-year-old. See, the only thing that I saw, the difference between him in the first half and the second half, is that he was taking his chances. He was shooting, which is a very good sign for Belgium because he's a good finisher as well. He could have got an assist as well tonight. Unfortunately, that was ruled out. But Kevin De Bruyne has to be one of the main players in this Belgian team if they want to progress to the next stages. He kept at it, eventually getting his goal. A vintage De Bruyne performance and more of this for Belgium could see them go very deep 
in the tournament. Of course, they will play Ukraine, which will be a fascinating way to close Group E. They aren't assured of progression, but certainly now well and truly in the mix after that fine performance. But here is the De Bruyne goal on 80 minutes, which sealed all three points. A very important moment for the national team there because, of course, their opponents in Romania were still coming. They were giving their all, but it wasn't to be De Bruyne sealing the deal with that important goal. And now they are in this interesting position going into the final day where they will effectively still need to win to go through. Yeah, and the confidence will be up again. Um, obviously, it was a, a big shock to them that they, they lost the first game, but they've got back on board now and they'll, they'll be relishing the opportunity to play. I mean, a Ukraine team who, who've now bounced back as well, so it's not going to be an easy game, but they'll fancy themselves. Yeah, definitely. I think Ukraine will be looking at it as in like, oh my God, you know, we don't mm. want to be playing this Belgium team. If they are playing like this, you know, Kevin De Bruyne scoring there, mm. Lukaku getting so close, and Doku, you know, being so fast. So I think uh, Ukraine will be very cautious as well. And the thing is, it's going to click. Mm. You know, they've, they've had so many opportunities today. They're going to click and, it, and someone's going to get their, you know, their behind smacked, if you like. And, um, yeah, I, I just I look at the quality that they do possess and it's it's there's too too many good players there. I think no cause for concerns. What good teams do they build slowly into tournaments? And of course Kevin De Bruyne has gone not the only highlight. It's time now for our strike of the day, which fell to Yuri Tillmans. Mihaila wanted it early, Tiedemann steps in, and Lukaku's onto this for Belgium. Romelu Lukaku, Doku in support. Jeremy Doku. important Tillemans goal there after just 74 seconds. You can see this stat here after Bernardo Silva and Bruno Fernandes in the earlier match. Yuri Tillemans has become the third Premier League player to score his first ever Euro goal today. Quite remarkable that stat there, Mark. It is, and even the other the players that are there as well. It, it, it seems strange that they haven't, but yeah. Um, We're full of like, wonderful statistics here. <laughs> yeah, of course we are. And, and, I, and I'm going to take credit for saying that before the game that he's one of the guys who can hit it from outside of the box. So you guys have got the, the correct yeah, yeah. score and I've got the correct score there. I, I was getting to, I was absolutely <laughs> getting that. You did call it, but an impressive display. Yeah, definitely. But the beautiful thing about that shot is Tillemans winning the ball beforehand at the half line and ending up at the box as well. You know, his sliding tackle, if it wasn't for that, I don't think they would have scored that fast. So Telemans not only winning that ball, but being brave and uh, putting that shot in the goal as well. There was so much to like about this Belgium mm -hmm. performance now. And they will go into this final match day fixture. We'll bring you the group standings very shortly. But this is, as I said just prior, this is what good teams do. They build into tournaments. And I wouldn't be surprised to see another very strong display against Ukraine on the final match day. Yeah, I think the, the Ukraine, they, they'll be worried about them. But not only them... Uh, if they get a good result there, when they get into the knockout stages, no one will want to meet them because they have that quality and they need to get, instead of it, four or five chances to get a goal, that needs to come down and I'm sure it will once they get firing. And, and as I say, they've got the players there. Lukaku, you know, he, he could have scored maybe two or three yeah. today uh, and it wasn't his day again, but it will be at some time and someone's going to get it. Dorku was a player that both of you tipped would be uh, very impactful here. Let's hear from him post-match and his post-match reaction. Uh, Jeremy, what a fantastic game of football. Yeah, it was a nice game. Uh, a lot of intensity from the start. Uh, it was not easy. Um, we scored a goal quick, very quick in the game. And then we had a lot of chances. Uh, a little bit of, of a pity that we didn't score a little bit more. I think we had uh, some chances that we could have scored. Uh, but an overall, was a good game and uh, we're happy with the performance. But the plan worked 100%. The plan worked, of course. We wanted to win, and uh, that's what we did. I think uh, last game was a mistake. Uh, we had a lot of chances that we didn't score. I did a mistake. 
but now we are all heading to the right direction and uh, we're happy that we could win today. And also for you, playing on another position, do you feel that this is your best position on the, on the field? Of course, I always told everyone that uh, I always like to, I prefer the left wing, but if I have to play on the right wing, I would try to do my best. Uh, but obviously today I felt good and uh, I'm happy with the performance. You were like a, a treat for defense uh, during all the game. Yeah, no, um, I think uh, they find me a lot in the one v one situations. Then I, try, I just uh, try to add um, a lot of opportunities and uh, look for the right pass and the, and the right finishing. Um, had some good passes. Uh, I think I could have scored the one goal, had that one assist. But that's something that I can work still on. And uh, yeah, up to the next game. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Off to the next game, indeed. Jeremy Doku there. Mark, five key passes for he on the day. Always a threat. Pace. Defenders don't like pace, and he's very direct. Uh, and he, he's he's become a better player by being at Man City. You know, he, he can he can do what he he can go down at the outside, and he can check and come back in like we've seen him today. Laid the ball into Lukaku, laid it off for Tilly Ellens. So yeah, uh, he, he's becoming a very very good player. No doubt about that. Now I told you that we love our statistics here at the Sony Sports Network. So let's bring you some more because our most goals at Euro 2024, there you go. Own goal seven, <laughs> Lukaku's disallowed goals group with three. Migratazzi, Musiala and Schantz with two each, but those two leaders we weren't expecting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wasn't expecting that as well, but uh, Lukaku, like I said, has done something really bad. Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know I, what, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I think so as well, but... The good thing is he's been finding the net. Unfortunately, there are things that he can't control, which are like, you know, the VAR. Still, we are in question, like how VAR finds offsides. But I think Lukaku shouldn't be worried about himself not scoring goals because he is. It's just that he maybe has to maybe shrink his muscles, maybe be a bit slimmer so that his hand is not offside. <laughs> is there a golden boot for disallowed goals? Because he's going to get it. <laughs> But uh, I guess the question is, as uh, Mario Balotelli's famous shirt said, why always me for Lukaku? Just off. Look, I look at the positive side of it. He's in the right positions. Exactly. He's getting into goal-scoring positions. Obviously, just needs to hold that run just a touch. But he still can be so effective, and he is a handful for any defence. Yeah, definitely. He's, he's a very good striker. Look at this run as well. It's a very good run. And the only thing he was offside for is for asking the ball. That's I right. think he had just pointed to De Bruyne, pass me here. And that is the only thing which costed him this goal. Otherwise, I don't think there is any problem with Lukaku. And this finish was so, so good as well. This is what he, he's got. As a defender, he can hold them off, link the play, but he's also got that pace to go down the sides of, of players. But That image frustrates me. Mm. Yeah. Just. Exactly. You can't even ask for the ball nowadays. You can't even ask for the ball. <laughs> just offside. But let's take a look at his key numbers there. I might put my arm out and I'm not offside. But up to the mark was he today. He still had an assist, a couple of key passes. He still had the shots on target. Won a couple of duels as well. But look, we know that he has to fire if Belgium are to go deep. He is so important to this uh, to this formation. But it, it, it's getting there, isn't it? You know, he, as I say, he scored three goals would have all been disallowed. This is him to a T. You know, he brushed that defender off quite easily and, and he got lucky, the defender, because it got a rebound out of play. But he's such a threat. He's so strong. And, you know, once he gets one, it's like a London bus, they say, isn't it? Once one comes, another one comes along after it. And he'll be the same. He'll, he'll get one and two and three and four as, as the tournament goes on, you know? I think the only good thing I also see from Belgium in the second half is obviously Lukaku is a threat, but also Lukaku allowing Kevin De Bruyne to be around him for the second balls and make sure that if attention is given to him more, then Kevin De Bruyne, players like Trossard, can get the finishes. Not all the focus on the attackers in this match because there were still some big saves and some other key moments in this one as well. And credit to both teams, of course, they went at it. Romania did push Belgium right to the wire, but of course, Belgium coming out on top. But Castils makes the number one shot, um, the number one shirt his own here, and pulled off some really important saves just to ensure that that near perfect display. Yeah, definitely. Keepers' union, obviously, he made the saves, but I think he had an assist as well. 
Hey, of yeah. course. <laughs> he, he was really good, huh? Of course, very, very important. And speaking of important, Castagna had a very important interception in this match as the ball was trickling towards the line, but Mark, it wasn't to be. No, he's done well. He's followed it in as well, hasn't he? Here you go. Yeah. See, only, only worrying thing that I see from this point is, is Belgium being a little bit too casual in their defensive approach sometimes? You know, this is a ball that they should maybe just hoof it away because they are winning. They shouldn't take any risks. But sometimes you get too casual and mm. sometimes too complacent. Well, I think complacent. what they were looking for is to get the goals, weren't they? You know, yeah. get another goal and, 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 and consolidate. But, yeah, as you say, you, you can't allow the opposition to have chances like yeah, that. Yeah, and it's, it's very easy. It's just a simple ball up. Just the way they scored. Mm. They can't let people score the same way because... You know, you can't give people a chance to let it. Still some room to improve for both of these nations. But for Belgium, it was all about the important three points. So Belgium to Romania, Neil. There's an update of the group standings. This is going to be something special. Romania and Belgium at top of the table, both with a plus one goal difference, but Romania have scored more goals than Belgium. That's why they are currently at the top. Slovakia with a even goal difference, Ukraine minus two. So going into the final match day, if there are two draws and they're the exact same score and Romania will win the group, Belgium will finish second in the group, but that is definitely going to change. This will be a dramatic final day in Group E. Thoughts about Manchester United and Everton. The erstwhile great Manchester United are still seesawing. A draw with Spurs on the 14th of January saw them win five straight games, albeit most of them just barely. Then came the awful loss to Fulham on the 24th of February in which they played a lacklustre game. Then came Sunday's derby where they lose one goal to three to the current league champions Manchester City, a game where they go a goal ahead, defend brilliantly for 50 minutes eventually capitulating to the obviously better class of their rival. Regarding the manager Eric Ten Hag, there are still many complaints from pundits left and right. The lack of clear sense of direction or style of play, lack or poor quality of man management and constant poor recruitment of players. Since the 25% takeover of Man United by Jim Ratcliffe, it was hoped that Man United will progress to a more successful direction under his watch. Some pundits even think that Ten Hag might even be replaced come next season. Yet the stats show that he did not do too badly. He managed 61 wins in all competitions in his first 100 games, which actually is better record than either Mikel Arteta with 54 and Jurgen Klopp with 50. Thoughts on Arsenal and Tottenham. If not for that one-week blip where they lost to Aston Villa and bow out of the Champions League, Arsenal have been by far the most impressive team this season. They have the best defensive record. They blow teams away by huge margin of goals, which leave them with the top goal difference, worth a point at least. Even after that week of disappointment, they are now pretty much faultless. It is not their choice, however. They have to be because reigning champions Manchester City have games in hand, which if they win all the remaining games, there is nothing Arsenal can do about it, they will be crown champions for the fourth consecutive time. But the way Arsenal played this season, it will be a shame if they did not win the Premier League. 